Hey Board Game Maniacs, Maniac Rob here to bring you another theme month for Board Game Maniacs. This month we are going to be playing the game Kick-Ass the Board Game. It is based off the comic book series, not the movie series. So again, it's an uh, adaptation of the comic book into the board game, which is really cool. I played this once or twice just to try to figure it out off camera. And I have to say, this game is very difficult to win. I have did some research online to see what the rating is. Everybody's giving them rating. It is getting a pretty good rating online. And also, too, as well as the consensus of everybody that have played this game is saying the same thing. That is very difficult. Period. Yeah, that's it. Um, they say the best way to play this is to play the maximum players. It will make it more easier. And that is a four-player. This is a one-to-four player game. That's right, from one to four players. So what this mini-series is going to be for this month for the theme is for Kick-Ass the Board Game is the first week I'm going to play the solo mission myself. And then next week I'm going to have somebody else join me, so we're going to play a two-player game. And then the week after that will be a three-player game. And then the last week for this theme month will be a four-player game where we have everybody. And that way we are going to make more of a solid decision on is it best played with four players? Three players, two players, or one player. And we're going to try to keep the bad guy uh, to be the, the same bad guy for everyone. But just remember, in this game, there are multiple bad guys that you can pick to go against at the end of the fight if you get that far. The two games that I played off camera, I never got that far. It's Again, it's very difficult, but... On a plus side, though, is that it is so entertaining to play this game. I loved playing this game. Some other games, you know, like, yeah, it's, it's, it's okay. But as a solo game, because I'm a fan of the comic book series and the movies, obviously, but because of a solo game and up to four players, I thoroughly enjoyed it playing solo. And I played it with one other person too as well. And the consensus would that was that this was a great game, even for two player. It was very difficult, but it was a great game. So we're gonna put this kick-ass game to the test to see if it is super difficult for players one, two, three, and four. So that again, this is the objective of this theme month. Plus, there'll be other videos going out during the month, and also the live streaming should be going on every Thursday at 7.30 Eastern Standard Time on YouTube and or Twitch. So just stay tuned for that too as well. So let's go to the board. This isn't a tutorial mission because I'm still kind of learning the game, but I will explain certain things that I know of from the book while we play the game too as well. So if you played this game and you please comment down below and let us know what you think of this game the pros of this game, the cons of this game, and give it a rating of 10, like 10, 10 being the best and zero being the worst. And don't just say, I give this game a seven out of 10 and leave it at that. Elaborate a little bit. Give us a little bit of explanation of why you gave it the rating you did. And tell us about your experiences of playing this game as a solo or four player and what have you. Because the more information that is out there, the more people are educated onto board games and tabletop games and everything else. So please comment down below, subscribe, hit the bell notification to get notified when other videos such as this one become available so everybody can view them. So let's go to the board, let's look at who I'm using and let's start playing this game. Boo! We have the board all set up and as you can see, I'm just scanning over to let you know what everything is for setting up. One thing I wanna say is this game to play, as you can see, is massive on the components that you use when you're playing this game. And on top of that too as well, um, the setup for this can take up to about 15 minutes to set everything up to make sure it, it's all ready to go. And then if you get to the bosses, there's another setup that you have to do. It's only a smaller one, but it is a lot of setup going on into this game. The way I got the board set up right now is going to be a little different than what we're having set up for the second video for this series. And the reason why is because I am playing the solo mode right now where I have one character and they have to try to, you know, save the city and kill the boss. We will talk about everything in more detail. Just a quick note about this game. I didn't do an unboxing video for this game, but when I do, I do give an age rating for each board game that we play or do an unboxing for and so on. This 
board game is an 18 plus rating. So you are probably going to be seeing some cards that have a little bit of language that is not suitable for people who are younger. I try to keep the channel PG or PG-13, so just be aware of this, that if you're having small children that is wanting to buy this game, it is an 18 plus rating because it does have a little bit more violence and swear words on cards and so forth. So be aware of that if you're thinking about purchasing this for somebody who is of a younger age. What you see here is the boss. It does recommend for the first game that you do play, to play it with the main boss is going to be the Red Mist Coward Bastard. Again, there's some choice words here, so if you don't or you don't like that type of uh, language, please, you don't have to watch this. It's just, um, keep constantly reminding. So anybody who's young or does not like that kind of language, this game may not be for you or video may not be for you. But it is recommended that you, you fight Red Mist for the boss for the first game. So that is what we did. You can see all these minions, they're yellow minions. So they are kind of like the henchmen of the Red Mist. And the orange are like your mini bosses that could show up. And the way they show up is by these event cards. Now, because this is a solo mission, you can see there's a number and a mask on the lower left-hand corner. That lets you know how many players. And in the book, it says for solo, solo game, you want to use the event deck that has just two player variants. This track here is for when you're going to encounter the boss. We'll go over that if we encounter it. <laughs> and that is if. Here you see a round track. There is nine rounds for the game that you go through. And also this here is your count for how many minions or henchmen that you're going to spawn. Now what's really cool about this is what they did is this is just a tracker so you keep going up the track. You can see here it has a, a one with the mask because I'm playing solo mode so it's that. If you're playing doubles, you would have this one. Then there's one other one that is double sided that is a three player and four player. That is a variant for this. So it kind of lets you know like, hey, if you're playing this, this is where what items you should use to play uh, whatever player game it is. I'm starting to struggle over my words here. This is what we call the action deck. Now, this action deck, there's two types. There are a movement and a fight. The red are fight, and if I swing over here, the blue air is more of your movement for in the game. Now, you notice with the blue, I have two cards set up here. Now, this is for the refresh phase where you can trade cards or you can keep the cards you have, but you only have a maximum of five cards you can have in your hand at any time. Now, you may have cards that let you have more. I don't know. Like I said, I've only played this game once or twice off camera. You can see they are double-sided, and you have a time symbol, and you have a movement of one. That will come in effect. I'll show that while we play the game. And on the other side, it also has uh, movement and a time symbol and something else that can happen too as well. Up here you have certain icons. Now this here is kind of like companions. You have ones which are like uh, a job that you have and they're one that's empty so that it's just free time more or less. So that is for the blue. Let's swing back over. This is the fight deck and with the fight deck you can see it has the masks. They're hero cards. You have movement and then you have special things on each of the cards that you can do, which I will explain as we go along during the game. Now, during the game for like a two player and up setup, you have four of these cards displayed and the rest is shuffled and put in here so that you can draw them during your phase. And you have two red ones that are displayed and the rest is shuffled. Now, for a single player variant, you only have two to start for each side, just be aware of that. Because this is Kick-Ass, I'm obviously gonna be using Kick-Ass for the first solo gameplay. I've used him before off camera. I like him. I like the comic books. I even like the movies. The movies are cool. So I'm gonna be using Kick-Ass. And just as always, the detail of these miniatures are pretty good. You know, you can definitely paint them and make them look pretty nice, which I'm going to do. I may have them painted for the second mission that we're going to play a two-player game i'm not 100 percent sure it depends on what kind of time if i can fit them in the paint because it is only one miniature then two miniatures you know like four miniatures in total but i may just keep them unpainted i'm not sure yet but just be aware uh purple is the hero color 
for all the miniatures. Orange is the mini boss, red is the main boss, and yellow is the minions or henchmen. All right, so let's look at two as well as what sets this apart to one player from the two player and up. Here, I apologize about the glare, but you can see this is the dashboard for the character. I'm only using Kick-Ass because it's a solo mission. Now, during a two player up game, you only start off with $3. But with the solo mission, you have $6 that you start off with. But this stays the same. You got hardship cards that once this goes down the track and you can see if I hit my happiness of four, then I have to flip over a hardship card. And if I hit my happiness of one, I flip over another hardship card, what will cause a lot of problems for the heroes. You see your strength here for Kick-Ass is starting at one and my social media starts at two and it goes up. Now, how did I find, oh, and my health is starting at six too as well. How did I find this out? Well, if you look at the top of each of the dashboards for the heroes, it says starting. Kick-Ass starts in the library, and the library is over there. You see $3, and again, this is for a two-player or higher. They start with $3 because it's solo. We are starting with $6, as I mentioned. Your happiness starts at seven, your strength is at one, your social media is at two, and you have six for your health. Now, during the game, when you first start it off, start up, each player has uh, an item, a starting item. You know, starting item for Kick-Ass is the sticks. It has one red die when you were rolling for fighting. You see, I have another one here, which is an armor vest. It is, goes in the slot for uh, clothing. And it has two blue die for your defense, and it costs $3 to purchase it. How did I get this before we start the game? Well, during the solo setup for the mission, what you have to do is it explains to you that you just randomly pick four item cards. I think it is, I'll go over, I'll read pretty them into the book, but four item cards and you draw one and you discard the rest. So I, out of the four, I chose to pick this one here and because it has defense, I wanted to keep his other hand open so he can have another weapon, but it you can do have two, you can have two handed weapons and if so, it would go in the middle like so and you can't have more than one of these equipped. Backpacks, you can have backpack items in here too as well. Uh, I think that's it for Kick-Ass I want to explain. Now, is there any other variants? Oh yes, one more thing I want to show you for the one player variant rule. You see here, these are the action cards. So you have the ones that I talked about, the time cards, more movement than anything. Then you have the fight cards. Each hero starts off with five cards with their symbol onto it that you can see. So these are kick-ass cards that I'm using. So, you know, because I'm playing kick-ass, obviously. So I use the kick-ass cards. You know, there's one here, you see right here, and it's just your plain action one. And the reason why, because in the solo play setup, it tells you to draw three, three of the blue action ones randomly, and then pick one and discard the rest and discard one of these that has your character's icon onto it and keep the one that you randomly drew. So that is the difference for the solo variant mission for that as well. On page 10 of the rules manual, you see a little section is solo play setup. It tells you, you know, when you're setting up this game and just summarizing everything, number one, use two player event cards, which I explained. Number two is the hero starts with $6 instead of three. Number three, draw three blue activation cards and choose one to replace one, so which I've done. Number four is draw four item cards and choose one to you start alongside with your starting item, which we explained. And number five is separately shuffle all remaining blue activation cards and red activation cards, but reveal only two blue cards and two red cards. Now, I explained that too as well, because during a two player and on, you get four of these and two of the red. So the red don't change, but the blue activation cards do change. It goes from four setup to two. And that is it, pretty much. Oh, that is like a lot of explanation going on for how to set up for this game. And I didn't go in detail and exactly explain what each does, because once I encounter it on camera, I will explain it. Because again, this is not much of a tutorial mission as opposed to just a, a one player game. 
I do explain rules as we go along, but I'm not gonna go in super detail. If you want to find more information about this, you can always just go to Google and look up how to play Kick-Ass the board game. And I'm sure you'll be able to find more videos and more websites where it explains in more detail on how to play this game. One more quick note I wanna mention is if you're ever unsure what to do during your game play, you see a round summary. It's on the bottom right hand corner of the game board itself and it tells you all the phases that you have to go through in that. Very, very easy. So you can, it's a quick reference on the board game itself. Very clever for that. And also too as well is on the back of this book. Mm -hmm, I'm just gonna flip it over. It gives you a rule summary too as well. So this is another quick reference, which is really cool. It makes things a lot more simple and fast to look up rules, which is really cool. Keep saying cool, 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 cool. And now again, where I didn't do an unboxing video, I just have to mention about the artwork in this rules book. It's incredible because it does follow the comic book. It's kind of glary, but you can get, you get the idea. It has like a little tiny comic book idea of what's going on. And it's very informative because it is a rules book, obviously. But then there's more comic book strip too as well, which explains about your gameplay and so on, which is really cool. So I like how they designed this rule book and incorporated the artwork from the, I was gonna say the board game, from the comic book. Really, really, really awesome on the way that they incorporated, very clever. So anyhow, rule summary here, as well as round summary on the game board. Let's start playing this game. First round and we are on the event phase, which is start, we take the event card and we flip it over and place it here and this just keeps expanding. If this comes off the board, the red is negative. If we win that event before this comes off the board, then it's good things that will happen to the hero. But let's look at the first event card. It is a night phase because it got the moon. Prison break. Every sleep phase spawn two minions in the police department. Now, what we have to do to win this is kill four minions in the police department. That's how we beat this game. This event, I should say. And if we beat this event, we will go down onto our minion track, which is here. It's already at zero right now, but it would go down if we beat it. Plus we get two social media for each hero. If we lose, we lose a social media for each hero and a minion in each occupied district. So we would add a minion in, an extra minion in every occupied district. So that is the first event that we have to try to concentrate on beating, killing four minions in the police department. But every sleep phase spawn two minions in the police department. And trust me, these districts can get overrun very easily and you have to follow the arrow and place two more minions if they get overrun. You will see as we play the game, but that is the event phase. <sighs> and it's it's not a bad one, I guess. I've encountered this one, I think, for one of my two games that I played. And we go on to the day phase. We have three day phases. We have morning, um, afternoon and evening, and then you have the night phase, or sleep phase, I guess you can call it. So morning, afternoon, and night, I think it is for that. And then you have your sleep phase and refresh phase. So we are on the day phase. Reveal a minion spawn card. And all players play an activation card. So that is it. That's all you do for the day phase, the evening phase, and the night phase, or day phase, afternoon phase, night phase, whatever kind of phases I can't remember, and I'm not looking at the book right now. But that's what it is, so I'm gonna set the camera up and tripod to make it a little easier so we can play through this. We are on to the first phase of the first round. And the first thing we have to do is draw, which is called a spawn card. So let's reach over, grab a spawn card. Whoops, don't want to knock them off. And this is basically what it says. It's a spawn and it tells you what happens. So let me see if I can get focus for this area. There we go. So this is a basic spawn. Now you can see it has uh, some artwork there of the henchmen or minions. Now we're gonna have to spawn hospital, library, police department. Now what these arrows mean is when you spawn, you're gonna put a minion in the hospital, then one in the library, then one in the police department, and then if you have to spawn more, you go back and you keep going to the hospital, library, police department. So it's a constant, constant circle. How you determine how the amount that you are going to spawn 
is by this here minion track or spawn track for the henchmen. And right now we are at zero. So we don't spawn any. So this spawn card that I drew does not take effect. So this gets just discarded. Because we are on zero for the enemy spawning, we don't have to do anything, we don't have to spawn anything, which is really good. They make it kind of simple to start off with for the one player because it's zero, zero, one, 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 two, 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 and three. So the most that we'll be able to spawn is three. So this game seems like it may be okay, but I'm not letting that fool me because when I did play uh, two player, it, it seemed the same way. It was easy at first, but then it really just kicked my ass. Kick ass, that's right. So now, that, so no, nothing is spawned. So now we get to play one of these cards. Now obviously there's nothing to fight, so I'm not going to play the red fight card. One thing I forgot to mention, is you do have a green card too as well. This here is a specialty card that will get unlocked during the gameplay. You can see on the hero track here that when my social media goes all the way up to the star, then I can unlock my green card and start using it, but not until then, so be aware of that. And that's in any, if it's a one player, two, four player, it's always the same. I'm choosing to play my companion card, Marty. You can see it's a companion or a friend because I got that icon. And this is what activation card I am playing. There's no fighting, so obviously I'm just gonna play movement. I can move up to one space and then I have a time my happiness will go up and my social media will go up too as well. And this is which one I'm going to play. Now, where I'm gonna play it is I'm already at the library. I'm gonna stay exactly at the library and you can see the time icon here and there's a time. So when I play a activation card at the library, which is the time one, it equals two of these symbols. These are pretty much the, um, Oh, what's that word? Residents of New York. And they are kind of like, they can create barricades. So clean up, there's none here. So I'm paying my time and I'm gonna get two barricades. So the clean up is, is if you clear all the enemies off of this or you go to this and you do this, you get the clean up. So clean up is an extra one. So I get two plus one is three of these tokens. I'm gonna grab tokens. I'll show you what they look like and what we can do with them. These are the tokens that represent the citizens of New York. Now these three, pretty much what I can do is I can take these three now and place them on any district that I want to. And what that does is when I'm going to spawn minions, if there's one here for, for an example and I'm gonna put a minion here, then that will stop them. So instead of spawning a minion there, I just take that away. So that's pretty clever. So I'm gonna set these up and then I'll be back one thing I want to do is a one main thing is you want to try to keep all the minions out of here because if you get six in here, you automatically lose the game. There's other variants on how you can lose the game, but I will explain them if we come up across them. When you use your activation card, you simply just flip it over to let know, or you can turn it sideways where it let you know that you did activate with this one. So this card is tapped right now. And where I put my citizens of New York is one here in Wall Street, one here in Central Park, and one here in City Hall. The reason why I chose that is because you can see these yellow arrows on the board. So if this starts getting overrun and you go in here, well, it's gonna stop it because it's leading to City Hall. Wall Street too as well leads to City Hall. So I wanna try to stop keeping people from, the minions from going to City Hall because that can be very, very bad. All right, so that is the activation phase that we played and we're on to the next phase. I just realized that this prison break event. Now, if you look at the, the counter, nothing is gonna spawn for the two of these here. And when this don't happen, this is not going to, I'm not gonna be able to try to win this condition. So I, my feeling is that this is gonna go to three and come off the board and I'm gonna suffer the uh, negative effects because there's no way I'm gonna kill four minions before uh, this is gonna raise up. That's what my guess is for this game. I could be wrong, but we'll see. But we are on to the afternoon phase because the three phases, just so I'm cl I clarify on this, is morning, afternoon, and night. So now we are on to the second part, which is 
the afternoon phase and we're going to draw another spawn card populate it and then we get to play an activation card and so on so i'm going to do that and then i'll be back second event or the second spawn card says shame all heroes in the same district as a minion you lose one of your social media and you have to populate hospital police department and dock but as you can see because we are on the afternoon phase there's no minions that are going to spawn so because of that nothing happens so now i can play another one of my card token so i can go up and i can do more now you can see the hospital i can pay a time to get two health but i'm already at my maximum health so going to hospital ain't gonna work wall street i can spend one happiness to get three dollars and clean up is a buck so pretty much i'm going to get four dollars if i go here if i go here spend the time i can put like a shield or a uh, a hit that will automatically happen when you're combating any villains in there and you can see here for every night phase it goes down until it goes off the board and it goes here and then you have to chew, do a ton to activate it again shop you can buy items clean up too as well this is for your shop where they can kind of the minions can populate city hall spend time gain get back one activation card Central Park, you spend time and you get a happiness or strength. Police Department, this is really cool, this one. So if you spend time plus $3 you spend, then you're able to take any one of these districts that have minions and clear them off, which is a cleanup, which is really cool. That's kind of what you do for the, the zones or districts. So I have to play one. So there's no minions on the board. Um, I should either gain some money or get ready to go and do some shopping because I do have six dollars right now and if you look in the shop what we have is a smoke grenade motorcycle helmet a pistol and night vision night vision is pretty cool for four dollars you get two re-rolls on the red and two re-rolls on to your blue dice which is really cool I don't know if I want to buy anything yet though I'm going to try to bank my money in case you know I need it desperately for another round so I'm kind of stuck at this I'll play a card when I figure it out I'll be back and I'll show you what I did what I decided to do was spend one of my job ones which is free time and I'm able to move two spaces and I got a time to sell so I was here kick-ass decided to go one two which brought him into Central Park and he spent his time so his happiness goes up one and the strength goes up one so he is kind of chilling out at central park here and the card is exhausted it's flipped over or turned sideways whatever you want because the reason why i say it's exhausted or flipped over because even if you flip a card over you can still do have one time and one action for these activation cards of movement and you can play either side if you want so it's good to just exhaust them by flipping them sideways to let them know that they're tapped now over here on the kick-ass board you see I was at six social media and I went up or no my happiness started at seven which is right here and I went up to eight because where I went to Central Park and my strength went up to one so now if I'm gonna fight anything I'm able to combat with one red die and another red die because of my sticks too as well and I have two defense for my armored vest now, that's pretty much it on how you play the game for this until we get to the fighting stage of fighting some uh, minions. So I'm going to stop the video, I'm going to start playing through it a bit, and I'll be back once we start fighting or something else big happens. I put my foot in my mouth too quickly. So the next spawn card that I drew, it has one villain. So what that means is villain at work. So when you see this symbol and it has one, you would go to this threat track and you would move it up, advance it to one. But still, there's no villains that are going to come on board. But I thought that was kind of important to show off how you would spawn. And now it has a little bit of text there and it says, every player with a job card in hand loses $1. So you can see job card in hand. Now, this card here, whoops. Is a job card because this is just flipped over like that and I use this and this is a friend card companion card so because I have a job card in hand and because of the text on this card 
kick ass just lost a buck because of this card. Thank you very much, their villain at work. Now, we would spawn them in police dock and shop, but because we're still at threat track zero for the villains, then nothing else happens. But that is your three day phases, your morning, afternoon, and night phase. Now we are going to go on to the sleep phase and I'll explain that. For the sleep phase, we're pretty much, we're going into the night phase where all of the heroes, even they spend their day kicking ass and fighting villains and everything, they have to rest at some point because they are only human. So they have to get the rest. And during the sleep phase, there's a couple of things that happens. Number one, you look at the dock and you can see this. So every sleep phase, if I go there and just say I chose to put the, uh, an automatic hit there, so for every sleep phase, that's going to advance until it goes empty and then it'll come off the board. So that's what's one thing that happens in the sleep phase. Number two, what you have to do is you have to look at the event. Now this is a prison break and this is every sleep phase. Spawn two minions in the police department. So this is going to happen right now. So we're gonna take two minions and we go to the police department and we place one here in here so now this police department is starting to get filled up right now so we have to try to go there and kill them and we don't want this to happen because that's really really bad all right and there's other things that happen too during the sleep phase another thing you do on the sleep phase is you look onto your player's dashboard and you see if you get any bonuses for anything so again just the red die for the bonus Nothing for my social or my happiness or social media. It's still the same. So that's all what happens for this part for the kick ass, the sleep phase for this round. We don't advance this until we get on to the event phase. Um, also too as well, we checked all of this stuff. Nothing else happens. So pretty much we are on to the refresh phase right now. And I'm just, this is a long one. So draw a card and gain, draw a card or gain. It's gonna be social media, happiness, or a buck. Now, when I say draw a card, you can pick one of, the, one of these two cards, or you can pick two of the fighting cards, and you can, because you only can have a maximum of five cards in your hand, so if you pick one of these or the fighting cards, you have to replace for one of these. And also, too, as well as these are going to be all refreshed, so you can use them again. And on top of that, you can buy items. If you don't, these get, we're gonna get four more new item cards that we put in there. And then if you don't pick any of these cards, new cards go there, new cards go there for the refresh phase. The round track will go up. We'll draw a new event card on the event phase and go on from there. Again, everything is pretty much, it's repeat it, repeat it, repeat it. So I'm gonna do all of this, play a little bit, and I'll come back once something big happens. But you can see now, that we have two minions on the board finally. A few things happened on the uh, refresh phase where I purchase, I pick some car a card up and so forth. So you can see there's two new cards that are down and I get rid of one of my free times because I took Edward because it gives me two happiness and an extra strength too as well. That's the only new card. On top of that, I sold $4 and I picked up night vision for my headgear. So now night vision will let me re-roll two reds and two blue die, which is really good in case, you know, I have some problems, it'll kind of ensure it a little bit more. And I didn't pick any more fight cards, but I had to replenish it too as well. Everything else is set up. Four new cards are in the store. And now we are onto the event phase. We didn't do anything with this yet, but that gets push down one, which is scary. And a new event card is spawned and that's looking for jobs. Each player discards a job card, placing it next to the board. This card can be, can't be used. Add one interest token each to Wall Street shop, hospital and police department to remove a token, you have to spend one time. And we have to remove all the tokens on the board to win this. If not, there are some bad effects that will happen. Because of that, looking for a job card. These are the interest tokens I placed when we were told me in the shop, Wall Street, and the hospital, and we'd have to spend an action 
or time card to remove these instead of you know reaping the rewards of the location. Also, too, as they told me if I'd have to put to the side one of the job cards for each player. It's only a solo player, so that goes there. It's not discarded. It's just it's here, and if we complete the looking for a job, we get this back. We get our job back. So pretty much, we're like fired, unemployed, and if we beat this event then we get hired again. <laughs> so that's two of them we have to worry about. Number one is fight the minions. We have to kill four minions, but there's only two on the board right now. So it's silly for me to try to concentrate on this. I'm gonna try to concentrate on looking for job unless something else happens. They'll put more minions on the board because I'm in trouble right now. Kick-Ass needs to try to uh, be intelligent and smart about this and decide what event he wants to do first. For the spawn card, you can see it was a basic spawn, and luckily, and unluckily at the same time, I don't have any minions that I have to spawn because we are at zero, but he decided to play one time, or one movement, and he gets time, happiness, and social media. So what he's going to do is, I already did it off camera, but he's here, Central Park, so he's spending one movement, because that's what that time card has, to move up one. So here you can see there's a, a riverway, but the only way you can go into that is if you go by the bridges. So he pretty much is, he crosses the bridge, and he goes up into here where the shop is. Now, because he's in the shop, he is going to spend his one time, his one time, which is right here, and get rid of this uh, and put it on the, the job thing. So this here token, like I said, there's three of them. <sighs> Their interest tokens are three of them. So Kick-Ass get rid of one so far. And this is the morning phase that we're in. This gets tapped now or exhausted so I could flip over. But because he used this for the time, he does go up by happiness of one and also social media. Afternoon phase of round number two, he played his Edward card. It's only one movement, unfortunately, but he gets two happiness and one strength. So he was here, he moved here, and he don't have any time ones, unfortunately, with Edward, so we couldn't activate this. But he does also, but he does go up two happiness, so he's at full happiness of nine, and his strength goes up. So. Down here, he gets one extra happiness, but he's already full of happiness. Now, when you advance, that red die is no longer good. So you wanna to try to get to here as fast as possible with your strengths, because then you're going to get an extra red and blue die, which is good. On the night phase, he drew a basic spawn, so the threat track goes up one, or the spawn goes up one. So now, one minion is going to spawn, and we spawn it in the top one, which is the library. So one of the minions go into the library. So we actually have another minion now. There's three, but we need to kill four. So this here, like I said before, this is probably gonna go off the board. We're not gonna be able to get to it. But that is the night phase and we're on to the sleep phase. I'll do that as well as the refresh phase and we'll draw the next event card afterwards. During the sleep phase, the prison break is still active. Now, I kind of advanced these already because you would do this on the event phase. I just did it anyhow, but I moved them back so you see on camera. So we're still at number two for this. But the prison bake, because we're on the event, every sleep phase, spawn two minions in the police department. So the police department now has three. And we go to put the other minion, but we can't because it is overrun. So now you see police department, you follow the arrow, you're going to have to spawn it in the central park. Now I have a choice. I can put two there and then just leave this. Or I can say, okay, I'm gonna put one here, but I can't because the citizen has stopped it. So what I'm going to do, I think, is why not? The citizens are gonna stop it so that it takes away and no spawn happens in Central Park. We are on the uh, event phase of the next track, which is round three. We have only up to nine. If we go to nine, we don't get three event cards successfully done, then we lose the game. That's another way of losing the game. Now, prison break is in number three, and then it's gonna go. I'm thinking we're gonna lose this. And looking for jobs, we got one of three of the interest tokens. 
I did some purchasing and trading cards. You know, unfortunately, that looking for jobs is still here. This counts as one of my card counts, even though I can't use this. So that's gone. So I'm only had three. I got rid of one of my cards and I picked up the public relations. It is a job card and two right here. So speed of two, which is good. Oh, this, this is looking bleak already. And also too, as well as I spent my remaining dollar and I bought a health kit. This is in a backpack. So this just stays into your backpack. So if I exhaust this, I get one health, but it's not a discard. You just keep it in your backpack, which is really good. I'm not sure if you would discard after you use it. If anybody who's watching this and played this and you use this card and you know about it, by all means, comment down below and say, yes, you have to discard this card if you use it. Just so we know. But now we are on to the next event for the next day and I pulled it. It is gotta gather some money. <sighs> for now on, place every dollar you gain on this card. Gather $10 on this card. So this is another one that's against us. This is not a good thing. So that goes here. So the events that we gotta worry about is Put money here to get $10 before it gets to three. This got one more space scope for looking jobs. We're gonna get two more of the interest tokens. And this one, we have to kill four minions. <sighs> this is tough. And you can see here that there's three minions here. There's one minion here. So we do have enough minions on the board now to try to do the prison break if I wanted to. And Kickass is here. He needs to go one space two space, three spaces to fight these ones, or two spaces to fight that one. At our movement, we have no movement. This has to be done in the library only. You can use this card because it says library on it. There we go, it says library. This one here is just your friend Edward. And this is a police relations, but you can use it anywhere. So in total, my movement I got is two and one is three more movement and that's it. So one, two, I can fight. And then three movement is here and I can fight, but I only have one fight card. Oh, this is gonna be tough. I would like to do the prison break one to kill the four minions, but again, it's looking more unrealistic the more we go with this. Now I have to think this through and what I can do. And when I figure it out, I'll be back. I think Kick-Ass kind of developed a little plan. And what he's thinking on doing for this is he's going to use his movement cards up during his one of his uh, day phases. So pretty much he can go three right now because the library, he can't do any movement, but he plays in the library. So if he goes, this is just an example. One day for the morning phase, two for the afternoon phase, and then three, he has one movement on his fight card, so he can come here and then fight these minions, because you can see here, his uh, happiness goes down, his health goes down, but he gains a red and a blue die. So if this happens with the, the happiness, these lights are horrible for these glossy cards. I'm gonna have to try to figure something out. I keep saying this, and please, if you know a way that I can I can cover over the lights because the lights are, it, are set in the ceiling to try to cut down onto the uh, glare. Please let me know what ideas you have for that. Now, I can move here and I lose my happiness by one and I lose one health, but I gain a red and a blue for this combat. And if you swing over here, right now I already lost that one red die, but if this is gonna go down, I'm gonna gain that red die back again. And that's what my plan is for that. But we still have to draw a spawn card first for the morning phase. <laughs> so let's do this. So my plan may just be short-lived because it could all come crumbling down because of this one card. Ah, one spawn. So basic spawn, I got to raise it by one and then police department, shop and hospital. This raises up one. So we're still at one though. So now we have to spawn a minion in the police department. You can see the police department is overrun, so the next thing is you're gonna put one in Central Park, right here. And then you would, if I had another one, it would be the shop and hospital, but we don't. 
So there is a couple of more options here that we can do. But I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to follow the original plan and hopefully I will kill four minions so that I can stop this prison break from happening. For the afternoon phase, I did play my card, the public relations, two movement, and I got a time and a social media. So I was there and I moved here and here. Now, when you're on a, a district that has villains, you don't have to fight them. It's only if you play a fight card, then you have no choice but to fight. But because I did this and I had a time card, time equals two of these, so I do, do get two citizens. And I placed one here and I placed one on the shop. But then when I spawn the villain at work, the shop is the first one, so it kind of pop that off. That's what I chose instead of populating for any more. So that's pretty good like that. And now the activation is on. And I'm gonna play, I'm a superhero. It's a fight card. So therefore, I got one movement. So I'm moving here, just like that. You're gonna see a fight action, finally. But before I do that, my happiness goes down and my hearts go down, but I get a red and blue die on top of what I have already. You can see right there. So I lose one heart and one happiness, because I'm at full happiness. I can lose a couple of happiness. It's not gonna hurt me. But that's what happens to me. So because I lost happiness right here, I go down the one this way. Um, let's see, I kind of read this wrong because I would have to lose a strength for to gain that red die. Oh, I miscalculated, oh no. So this happiness goes down. So I don't get that extra one die, but I am able to combat to fight them. As the card showed me, I get the red and blue, plus I have my sticks, it gives me a red die and I have my armored vest that gives me two blue die for defense. So this is what my hand that I'm rolling didn't look for. So the two for attack and three for defense. Now, the way that these are, they're considered one power. So there's three power in this police department already. So let's roll and compare and see what happens here. So hopefully we're gonna be able to do something successful. Okay, so I got two defense. So three pow, so that blocks two of them. So I get hit for one and I got two hits and a lightning bolt. Now, on my card, do I, on my sticks, do I have anything special? No, because that lightning bolt will not do nothing. <laughs> but I have my night vision, so I'm able to reroll two of these because it says here night vision, I'm able to roll, re-roll two red or two blue. I keep hitting the camera with my hand. But I'm gonna keep this one because it's got a lightning bolt, but it don't really matter to be honest because I can't do anything with a lightning bolt. Um, and there's no other one that's that here. So I'm not gonna re-roll that, but I'm gonna re-roll my one defense die instead to see if I don't even get any hits. But that's a blank. But it's got the two symbols, so what's that telling me? I can reroll two of them. So I'm just gonna reroll that one again. And now I got my three defense that I want. So three pow, nothing touches me. You didn't even touch me because I'm kick ass. And I hit them for two. So therefore I kill two of the minions and they do nothing to me. So these two are gone. They're gonzo, they're dead. So I am going to put them for prison break, but I need it for. Oh. And I don't have another fight card because it's exhausted. So my plan kind of just totally fell apart here. I thought maybe I would be able to kill this extra one because I did miscalculate. I thought my happiness would go down to give me an extra red die, but it's I would have to get my strength to go down to one red die. So because of that, that failed totally. So this plan just totally backfired on me. Oh no, but this is still the morning phase. But as you can see, I only had one fight card here. And so I'm, I'm in some pretty deep trouble right now. Totally in deep trouble, but I'm gonna keep playing and I'll be back when something else happens. Hopefully nothing big is gonna happen because I don't wanna die already. This is an interesting spawn card. So my 
Spawn goes up by one, heavy weapon, all heroes in the same district as a minion immediately fight with no defense. So I raise up, so now I have two spawning minions, but before I spawn them, I have to do this here. And you can see that Kick-Ass is in a, in a district with a minion. So he's going to fight this that has one power against one red die because he don't have a fight card to help him or anything. So let's go to dice box. Let's see if I can get something lucky here. And I get blank. So that means that this minion right here hits kick ass for another hurt. That unfortunately ends the uh, <laughs> the third night phase and onto the sleep phase you update everything and you check but then we're on to the refresh phase right now you didn't see me doing the sleep phase because i did it off camera nothing really big happened but unfortunately a lot of things are happening on the refresh phase so for the refresh phrase refresh phrase phase draw a card or gain social media happiness or a buck now I can do all of this off camera, but a lot is happening on every refresh phase. Now, when I come to the event phase, even more things are gonna happen. It's gonna be very detrimental. And what's gonna happen is this card, cause I failed to kill four minions in the police department, that's gonna be gone. I'm gonna lose the social media and I have to gain, add one of the minions to every occupied district. So a minion would go here, but nope. It would go here so two would go here but we got this that's going to block one a minion will go here and a minion would go here and a minion would go here so that's what's going to happen on to the refresh phase for the or the event phase i should say and we're going to draw another event and these two slide down so a lot of things are going to happen really bad i'm going to do all of this off camera and i'll come back and i'll show everything what happened as well as with the new event card we are on the event phase for round number four now and Prison Break, as you see, is off the board. And we suffered some stuff. We lost a social media and a minion get added to every occupied space that has a minion into it. So now we have more minions on the board and we may be losing this free time card if we don't get the other two exclamation marks, which are the interest tokens. Now, this is the new event card. Soup for the poor. Place one interest token each at the library, Central Park, and hospital. To remove the token, spend one and a dollar. Oh, this, this is becoming very, very difficult in my opinion. So I'm gonna do that and I'll be back to show you what I had to do. I added all the interest token so the green is for the soup of the poor and the blue is for looking for a job now i have two interest tokens at the hospital i still have the uh looking for a job at wall street i have soup for the poor at central park and soup for the poor at the library that's a lot that's going on here now I never completed one event yet i'm not even close to completing one of the events so it is <sighs> causing me some some issues here but that that's okay because i'm gonna keep pushing forward kick ass does not give up he's going to just keep constantly kicking ass and taking names so i'm going to go on to the uh morning phase which is drawing the spawn card and so on and so on i'll be back if something else happens hopefully i won't be back for for bad news but for good news on to the night phase for round four i kind of thought this through very very carefully and what i did is i played you can see the cards that i played so first off i played the manager one on my afternoon phase and i moved up the wall street here and i lost the happiness to get five dollars so every time i got money i put it on there but you can see there's a lot more money here and the reason for that being is because I started accumulating money, but every time I accumulated, I have to put it there, so it was five. And then I played my next one, which is the uh, public relations time card, and I get social media, so I went up, and I did that too as well on one of my turns. And then on my next turn, I'm playing this one here, which is using Edward, I'm moving 
one space, but I'm choosing not to move. I'm staying exactly where I am on Wall Street. And I got two happiness, but I only went my happiness up to one. And I get $3 because that one happiness that I lost, I get three bucks. So the three bucks that I get go there. And that means that I'm just grabbing the money here. So three bucks, I'm putting two, which will equal 10 in total now. And I get one extra dollar that I'm placing for kick ass. So I finally completed one of the events. So there's, I have to get $10 to complete this event. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So that's 10. I complete this event. I'll show you exactly what happens when you complete one of the events. Because I completed this event, got to gather some money. That $10, it says I'm in the green now. So the line through means that the threat track for the minions goes down one and divide the money on this card between heroes as you wish. Now, there's only me and one hero, so I get that $10 plus one that I already have, so that's gonna be 11 bucks. So I may not have a job, but I gained some money for helping people. So this event goes, it gets discarded, because when it, all of this money, money, dollar bill, y'all goes to me, and on top of that, this event card is going to go to number two right here because I cleared it so it slides over. And again, we are on the night phase. Now, when we're going in the sleep phase, that obviously is gonna go back to number three, but hey, we completed one of our events. We only have to complete two more before we can start to try to find the red mist. A lot has happened on the refresh phase. Now, I got rid of one of my cards here, which was Edward. And I took the part-time job one because it has a two movement, it has time to get a dollar. So I think that might be important to do. Everything else is pretty much the same. And I'm still got this one tied up because the looking for jobs is going to go off the next round. You can see the event here because we're on the event phase. I just want to show you everything that happened before we go on and flip over the event. Now, I did move the, the track down one for the minions. And you can see there's a lot of minions on the board right now. That's not looking really good. I replenished the cards into the store, but before I replenished the store cards, I actually bought a weapon. And that weapon that I bought, I spent $5, and I bought the katanas. Like, this is awesome. So with the katanas, if I use it as a single weapon, a single-handed weapon, I get a red die and a blue die. If I use it as a double hand. I get two red, two blue, and for every lightning, I get an extra hit. So obviously, I get rid of my sticks, which is my starter item, and now it's a two-handed weapon right here because that is super powerful, which is awesome. And I also tap my health kit so I can go up for my health back up because I did this twice. So on every refresh phase, you can untap your stuff. So I did that, and I went back up to six health because I think it's important and my happiness is at eight and my strength because during the gameplay I was able to go up because I spent my card to go up in strength. So now I got another red die and blue die. So that means that when I'm going to attack and defend, I get one red, three red, and I get one blue, two, three blue, four, five blue, and I get reroll. So this means that kick ass is gonna be super powerful and potentially, as you can see like the glare from the lights, like this is horrible. But anyhow, you can see that Kick-Ass is becoming super powerful, so he may be lucky and be able to find Red Mist and kick his ass because that's what Kick-Ass does. But I'm gonna keep going on and we'll play and see what else happens. But before we do, we are in the event phase for round number five. I'm gonna grab the event card while the camera's still rolling and we can see exactly what it is. And this is Eddie Loomis. Uh-oh, so he's one of the mini bosses. Spawn Eddie Loomis and one super minion at the hospital. You can only attack Eddie after you kill all other enemies in the same district. And Eddie has one hit and three health. And who to bleep are you? Kill Eddie Loomis and I'm able to drop down the minion track by two. If I lose, Draw a minion spawn card. So that is not a very good thing right now. So I'm gonna spawn that. I'm gonna keep continuing on and we'll go on from there. 
You can see here that this is the miniature for Eddie Lomas. Really nice detail onto him too as well. So he goes at the hospital and also there was only two minions here, but we got a super minion. And how you determine what's a super minion is you just take one of the black bases and you put it on one of the minions. Not one that's here, but on like a, a free miniature figure, minion figure and put it onto it. And then you put it in the space. Now, if this occupied three minions and said to place a super minion, then you would just turn one of these super min one of these minions into a super minion. But there wasn't one there, so I just put a black base and put it. The difference between a mi regular minion and a super minion is regular minion has one power, super minion has a power of two. So in this hospital so far, it's one, two, three, four power right in this hospital for just the minions. I hope that has clarified some things here. Took me a bit to find it in the book, but I did find what the power of the minions are. On round five, the afternoon phase, what Kickass did is he played his cards to, oh, this, this is kind of nerve wracking here. Um, what he did is first in the morning phase, I just flipped this back. He played his part-time job. He got a dollar and he spent his time token to remove one of the um, interest tokens here. And then spawned again, more minions popped up because you can see the board is getting very populated quickly. And then he played a public relation. He, he was able to move up to two. He got a social media and time card. So in, he spent the time here and he got rid of the other exclamation mark, which is the interest token and his uh, social media skill went up. So you can see the line there. So if I wanna shop now because I'm at this rating of social media, it's one less dollar to buy an item, which is really cool. But what's even better about this is this looking for a job. I have the three of them. So therefore, this is event number two that I have just completed. So because event number two is completed, I am no longer unemployed. You know, the event track goes down by one for the minion spawn, and I get $2 for each hero. Recover the card you discard it. Boop, boop, boop. So this goes here. I get my fifth card back. One, two, three, four, five. So I'm back up to five cards now, which is really good. Oh, this is like definitely going to be helping me out, I hope. It's gonna help me out. And I also get two box too as well. And that is because I recovered. So that is really good. So this thing again, the round track for the spawn goes down by one. The round track stays obviously. And I get my $2 because I'm the only solo hero. So that is a big benefit. So I'm gonna continue on. This is starting to shape up maybe a little bit, but again, if I run out of minions and they all are spawned here, then I lose the game, remember. So I still got a, a lot of stuff against me, or Kickass has a lot of stuff against him to try to finish this game and rid the city of the boss scum Red Mist. On to the night phase for round number five. I'm going to use my free time one, the card that I just finally get back. So I got two movement and a time. So I'm doing that and kick ass is here. He's going to go one, two. So he goes here now because he has time. If he spends $3 to as well, he can clean up any district and take all of the minions away from any one of the districts. So what he's going to do is he's going to spend his three bucks. I'm just going to grab my $3 there. See there, $3. And I'm going to choose to clean up this district. So the cops come out because Kick-Ass donated $3 to their police fund. They're all happy. They arrest these three minions, so they are taken off of the board. And now because I cleaned this up, I am able to clean up one more minion from any district. And you guessed it. I am cleaning up this super mutant that has a power of two from that district so that he is going to not be able to add more trouble to fighting the minions. And that is my third activation, the nighttime phase for round number five. I'm gonna do the sleep phase, refresh phase, and then we'll be back to flip the next event card. We're on round number six now on the event phase. I didn't pull in yet, 
But what I did is I spent a dollar and I bought a taser, which gives me an extra red dice, and then the card is exhausted. Um, what else did I do? Oh yeah, I traded one of my cards, my activation card, so that I could grab stress, and I get two times, but I lose one happiness for that. But that could come in effect that I need, but that's about all what I did extra. So now we're gonna flip over the next event card. You remember, we only have three more days to do to kind of get one more event. If we get one more event, then hey, we're laughing. So, uh-oh, so this here is, you are fired. Every player discard a job card, placing it next to the board. This card can't be used. Each player receives two interest tokens. Oh, not another interest card. Heroes must deliver those tokens by spending one action at Wall Street or library. So we got two interest tokens and we have to go to Wall Street to drop them off for each action and because of that then it just we find a job i guess and if we six we have to deliver both tokens one to each different location what wall street at wall street or the library so i have to do one for wall street and i have to do one for the library uh the minion track will go down and we get a dollar for each hero recover the card that was discarded but if we lose we lose two happiness and your hand limit is reduced by one, so that card would be gone forever. So that one don't seem as bad as uh, fighting Eddie, because, but Eddie, I want to fight him, because he's a mini boss, and I got my katana, and I want to start, I want to try it out, because Eddie is kind of there, but you can't fight Eddie until these guys are gone, because it does say on his, on his card here, you can only attack Eddie after you kill all other enemies in the same district, so I may have to just, bypass Eddie for now and either do the soup for the poor or do the you are fired. They seem to be more of a logical choice, an easier choice to complete for this one because remember, if I don't do it then soup for the poor is gone and I'm gonna suffer some hardships that go on for poor kick ass. But that is the event, so now I'm gonna continue on and I'll be back and show you what happens when it happens or after it happens. Just something will happen and I'll be back. We're at the beginning, the morning phase of round six. I had to show this because this just completely messed me up a bit. You can see City Hall now has three minions in there because of this stupid spawn card of kidnap. So the track goes up by one, so they were at their maximum, which is three. Each player with a personal card in hand loses one happiness. So I dropped down from seven to six. That don't affect me too much. But when I was spawning the minions, the library shop and hospital, because they were full and they got to follow the arrows, they all went to City Hall. So I'm three away from losing the game this way. And I'm three away from losing the game from the round track too as well. So it's not looking good. Kick-ass morning phase. I played the stress card. Two movement. I get two time, but I lose happiness. So my happiness is now down to five. And I'm here, so what I did is, because of the, I spent one of the time to get two of the citizens, and I put them in City Hall, because I want to keep this as free as possible. <sighs> and my second one, what I spent was to get rid of one of my points of interest and I dropped it on this. So all I need now is to drop my second point of interest onto Wall Street, which is right here. And that would mean that I completed that event. Hopefully I'm gonna do it my next turn, but we gotta spawn another one of the minions right here. And you can see the minion cards. The minion count is getting very low. Uh, oh, another kidnap. Yay, so I lose another happiness. And then it goes up by one, but it can't go up because it's three, so I take three of them. I'm gonna populate the board, lose my happiness, and then I'll be back and show you what it is that happened. Because of that horrible spawn card that I got, luckily I put two of the citizens of New York to protect City Hall, because if not, two of them would have been there and that would have been one away from sudden death. But police department 
Central Park, they're kind of overrun. So every spot on this board is overrun except for the police department and City Hall. Ah, Kick-Ass got to start working his magic here to try to do stuff. But I think what he's going to do on this turn now is after the spawn is he's going to spend his free time right here so he can go up the Wall Street. So that's two movement. And he's going to drop off the last point of interest. Oh, he don't even have to spend two movement because the bridge is right here. So he can go bloop, like that or he can go boop boop. But in either case, he's there. He spends his time action to get rid of this baby right here to drop that off. Now, that means that I completed the third event that I had to do to start finding the boss. I'm gonna set everything up. I'll be back and I'll explain how it is. This is the furthest I've ever got in this game. And this isn't solo mission, so maybe it, it's not as difficult as everybody is saying for like, one two or three player i'll find out we'll find out together i should say but right now i'm kind of playing it somewhat smart i guess and strategically placing everything so that it helps so maybe we will find the red mist coward and put him the rest with the end of the evening phase you've seen what happened we did clear that so we had to do the boss event for spawning now you get a plot card for Red Mist, and on here it tells you what to do. So the X stands for how many hits he has. X is for how many players it's one. So he gets one hit, he got one shield, and he's got two health. That I marked off here onto the track right here. And then it tells me a couple other things that we have to do. And I'll just read these off the card. It says, take all eight Red Mist tokens, shuffle them and place them on one, one of them face down on each district, which you can see. I have done for each of the districts. Every time you complete a boss event from the Red Mist final plot, reveal two Red Mist tokens and immediately apply their effect. Then draw a new boss event. So if you complete an event, you randomly draw two of any of these tokens, flip them over, they'll have uh, icons onto it and you're going to resolve them and then continue on by pulling another boss event. If you reveal the red mist token, it has, okay. Again, PG, but I'm gonna say per diem what it is, and it has one of the boss tokens that says shit. So if you draw that token, spawn a red mist immediately in that district, so then you'll be able to fight him. Every time you complete a boss event, draw a new one. And finally is kill red mist to win the game. Oh boy. So we only have three tracks here to do that. We're getting overrun by the minions too as well. We still have these two events to deal with. I have to flip over a boss event too as well. Oh, and we're going on to the night phase because I still have two action cards, or three re activation cards, two are movement and one is fight. I don't know what we're gonna do here, but hey, let's just go on and Let's pull the uh, boss event card just to see what it is. The boss event card, Red Mist, follow the track. Place two times intense interest tokens on the board. One per district starting from the library and following clockwise, ignoring City Hall. To pick up a token, spend one time, then roll the fate dice. If your result is, it looks like a guy with bandages, spawn one minion in the district. Gather X interest tokens on this card. And if we successfully do it, we drop the, the minion spawn by two and reveal two tokens. Really good. But if we fail, remove two random red mist tokens. If one of them is the boss, you lose the game. So we can lose the game by grabbing one of these ones that are the boss, which is the, the one that says crap or shit, whatever you want to call it. But that is it for that event card, but we still have to deal with these two as well. And that's not good. I'll populate the board accordingly and we'll continue on the battle with Kick-Ass. I placed the interest tokens. We're using the red interest tokens again. So we have the green and the red interest tokens on there. So one was the library, so it's two X. So two times the amount of players, which is two. So one here and that way there, I placed in the police department. Actually, I did that wrong. It's clockwise, not counterclockwise. 
So go over here to the hospital. I need to know what my clocks are. Ah! Any case, that is it. That is the setup for that Red Mist Encounter event card. And we're on to the evening phase now for round number six. And remember, there's still Eddie, Loomis, and Soup for the Poor that we have to do. But remember, for Soup for the Poor, we have to pick up these by spending a time token plus a dollar. And there's one, two, three of them on the board. Now, I know the objective is to find the boss and kill him, but we have to also pay attention to the other two events because that can still turn around and bite us in the ass. Uh, I don't know which one I'm going to do, but I'm thinking more and more we should just try to stick with the objective at hand, which, well, there's three objectives actually, but the red mist one I'm thinking is one I'm gonna go to gather the two interest tokens and you know, that might be a little closer because uh, we're probably going to lose soup for the poor because I'm going to have to at least be able to move three times. And I only have two more uh, tokens here and one is a time token. So I'm thinking the soup for the poor is not going to happen. Eddie Loomis, I'm close to Eddie Loomis now so I can go down and try to kill him, but I can't fight him until I get rid of these. So if I come down here, and I roll the dice because I'm pretty powerful now with my katana that I have and I have my taser too as well. I could potentially kill these guys or it should be in my fight card but then I can't fight him too as well unless I roll really high because these are powers of one so right now that's I'd have to get at least three hits with no with them not being able to do any defense but they have three defense and then Eddie himself has uh, one attack and three health. So that's kind of looking bleak too as well to do that. So potentially I think for my first evening, I'm gonna do the, the red mist follow the track. Oh boy, wish me luck. What I'm doing then is I am taking Kick-Ass. He's going down in the hospital district where one of the interest tokens for red mist is. And he's, you know, his token has two that he's spending. This one here, part-time job. So he got the time and a dollar. So he gets the buck. Plus, because of the time, now he has to take the black die and he has to roll one of these symbols to be able to have one of these added to the Red Mist card, event card. So hopefully he'll do it. Woo! He does. So that means he successfully pulled one of these off and it goes on there. Now he needs two of them because remember there's one more. After he does that means he completes this one. We're able to pick up two of these random redness tokens, reveal them, see what happens and then flip over another boss event. But that was the evening phase. Now we're going on to, or the night phase I should say. Yeah, we gotta go on the sleep phase now, unfortunately. Just a quick correction here. I did make a mistake, but I did manage to catch it. And that mistake was where we are starting the evening phase, um, I forgot to draw a spawn card. So I did draw one. It is a basic spawn. We are at two for this spawn tracker. So I spawn two of them, but you're gonna put one in the hospital. So the hospital is here, it is already overrun. So you follow the arrow, you go to Wall Street, that's overrun, so I placed one here. And then the other one was the police department. Hold on a second here, I made a mistake there. That guy wasn't there. So hospital goes there. Next is the police department. So you place one in the police department such as this, and then you would place another one in the docks, but we're not gonna place one in the docks simply because that we don't have two because we only have two spawns because the threat track is there and it's getting more crowded at city hall because there's two more spaces so we are looking at <sighs> failing at this this game it is turning to be difficult now it's a heck of a lot of fun i have to say but it is showing its ugly head of difficultness for us to try to complete this in solo mission but i'm still doing it because kick-ass will 
keep pushing forward until he either dies or prevails. Hopefully he's going to prevail and not die. And now we're on to the sleep phase and then the refresh phase. I'm going to do that off camera, then I'll be back so we can start on round number seven. Some ugly, ugly, ugly things have happened during the refresh phase and this, well, the sleep phase, nothing really big happened, but the refresh phase, some things happened really bad. I did replenish things. I, all, I bought a sniper rifle for three bucks and it automatically, you're able to kill one minion, like just like that anywhere on the, on the board. You can just snipe them out, which is cool. And I traded in one of my cards and I got another fight card because it can, I'm just getting prepared. So if I have to come across red mist, I'm going to be able to kill him. But unfortunately, what happens is I do lose soup for the poor because it's an event that I failed. So I lose two happiness and one social media. Now, why this is bad is because if you look, I was here and I dropped two. So that means I hit the, the, the first hardship condition, which is depression. So at nighttime, I lose a happiness. So I have to try to get my happiness up so that I can get this card flipped back over. If not, I'm going to suffer a lot of hardship all the time. And my depression, I mean, my social media skills went down a bit because now to buy, I don't get that bonus of a minus one money for buying something in the shop. So this is gone. I failed that one, unfortunately. And now I got to draw another boss event. Now if I'm playing, I'm kind of rambling on here, but if I'm playing this run, please let me know in the comments below. When this comes out, just keep in mind that the other three videos are going to be shot before this video comes out. So if I do make any mistakes here and you comment and I don't correct it in the next video, that is why. And the reason why that I'm shooting all these videos as soon as possible is so that I can constantly keep the, the influx of releasing videos every week. But still, if I'm playing this wrong in some way, comment down below and let me know so that when I do come back to this and play it more, whether it's going to be just a fun night on a Saturday night game night with other, play or other board game maniacs not recording it, or if I'm going to shoot more of it, of this on the channel, then I will be able to correct this too as well. So just keep that in mind. So this here is gone. Unfortunately, I lose that. Oh, oh boy. So now we still have Eddie Loomis is in number three, Red Mist here, and we have to flip over the other, the other one. Now I already advanced the round track, we're at seven, so let's grab this boss event. Red Mist, and it's a night phase. They are everywhere. Every sleep phase, place one minion in City Hall. Oh, 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 that's not a good thing. Clean up two times districts, so two times the amount of the players, so two districts. If I do, then the minion track goes in by two and I reveal two tokens. And if I fail, remove two random red mist tokens. If one of them is the boss, you lose the game. Yes, that sucks royally. So these are bad and that's bad too as well because if I fail this one though, it's draw a minion spawn card. So, you know, that, that's okay. It's That's not too bad, but you can see, we only have three minion cards left, three minion there. Very bad, and we are in the morning phase. So I gotta do another spawn card and then go on. So this game may potentially be over at this turn. Hopefully not, we will see, and I will be back. All right, so I just drew the spawn card for the morning on round number seven, and it is as follows. Plus one to the spawn track, so it goes up from two to three for the spawn. And we only had three minions to spawn, and then we have to do a dock, shop, and hospital. So let's take the first minion here, and it would go into the dock. But you can see the dock is full, so we go to the next one. It would be Wall Street, and then be City Hall. So we place it right there, and that's one for City Hall. So next is going to be the shop. So we take the minion, and we're gonna place it in the shop, but oh, that one's full, so you follow the arrow and Central Park. So therefore, it goes over to City Hall. And that means we just lost the game. Like I said in the previous clip, I potentially think we're gonna, the game's gonna be over this round and it is over this round. 
Holy crapola. Because of this stupid spawn card. Get out of there, spawn card. <sighs> and that is it. That is the first game for the month of Kick-Ass, the board game by Cool Mini or Not, I think is who made it. I never mentioned it before, but I think it's Cool Mini or Not that plays Kick-Ass. And that's the first solo mission. I don't know what to say. I really hope you enjoyed this battle report for the solo mission for Kick-Ass the board game. I have to say, this game is hard. It's living up to what people are, are saying online about it. That it is a very difficult game. And it's easier the more amount of players you have. But they say, when you're playing this, you should play with four players. And I'm starting to see this because it is very difficult. But I do have to say, I've got to the boss event, which is cool because I never did into the two games that I played off camera. And, you know, Difficult, yes. Enjoyable, yes. Would I play this game again if I wasn't recording another session of it? Yes, because I would want to try to beat the boss, which in this time is Red Mist. So the next time, the next video that you're going to see for the second week of Kick-Ass the Board Game, it's gonna be myself and Shelly playing this game, a two-player game, and still trying to beat Red Mist. Now, when we play the second two-player game, if we do beat Red Mist, then we're going to advance on to another boss. And then when it's a three-player game and we play it, if we beat that boss, we're going to advance on to the next one. But until we beat Red Mist, which they recommend is the first boss to fight, he's going to just keep rearing his ugly head into the New York City and causing havoc as much as he can and starting to become more powerful as, you know, Red Mist, the evil villain. Ugh. So I hope you enjoyed this Board Game Maniacs. Comment down below and let me know what you thought of this video, whether it is audio quality, video quality, entertainment value, you know, give it a rating between zero and 10, 10 being it was extremely enjoyable, it was the best, and zero being the worst possible thing. And also too as well, like I said in one of the, uh, in the past clips for this game, and that is comment down below and let me know what you think of the game personally, as in tell me your experiences of how many players when you played this, what you thought it was, was it kind of too overpowered for a small amount of players, or maybe you successfully found the boss and beat him. I want to know because I'm very curious about this. This here is again, a game that I definitely will play more and more because I do enjoy it immensely, just like other games. It may not be on camera, but I will definitely be playing this more in the future. But there's gonna be three more games of me as well as other guests playing this on the channel in the very near future too as well. Whew. I hope you enjoyed it. Comment, subscribe, hit the bell notification to be notified when more videos come on. And again, if you want to, please, by all means, you can become an official sponsor of Board Game Maniacs by going to patreon.com slash board game maniacs. And you can donate a $2 fee every month or just one time, just to, to boost it up because we are trying to raise up enough money so that we can get a new, new equipment, specifically a computer, a better, stronger, faster computer so that I can edit better, more easily, as well as when we do our live streaming, that it's more reliable and nothing is crashing on us, because that's very frustrating to both the people playing the game in the live stream, and also you, the viewers, when it crashes. And that it just gets frustrating in the long run. So again, you can donate on patreon.com slash boardgamemaniacs to help us out, or you can go to streamlabs.com and look up Board Game Maniacs 1, and you can also do that while we are doing live streaming too as well. Oh, thank you very much for watching this game. Thank you for lasting this long with me and look forward to next week when we try to beat Red Mist with two players. So until next time, communication is key in any situation, any environment, any anything. Just communicate, that's right. But most importantly of all, when you're playing board games or games or tabletop games, and that is...
be a maniac. Eww. Hope you enjoyed that video. If you want to keep up to date with Board Game Maniacs, click on the like and subscribe button to be notified when more videos come available. If you want to become an official sponsor of Board Game Maniacs, go to patreon.com slash boardgamemaniacs. Or you can go to streamlabs.com slash boardgamemaniacs1. That's right, and you can donate to help keep the lights on, keep food in our bellies, and play more games. We'll purchase more games, more equipment to make Board Game Maniacs evolve and get bigger and larger because of you, the viewers. I thank you from the bottom of my toes to the top of my head for all of your support. And until next time, Board Game Maniacs, be a maniac.